Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into the shocking and unexpected ending of Joker, Foley Adu. But before we get into it, I just want to give a major spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I recommend watching it first, then coming back to join the conversation. All right, let's break down the shell and drop conclusion. Let's start by talking about how we got to this point. Joker, fully Adu, is the much anticipated sequel to Todd Phillips' groundbreaking Joker from 2019. That movie gave us a raw, psychological take on Arthur Fleck, a mentally unstable loner who becomes the iconic clown prince of crime. It wasn't just another comic book movie, it was a deep character study that blurred the lines between reality and Arthur's delusions and it ended with him standing triumphant in the streets of Gotham. Now in Foley Adu, we pick up with Arthur in Arkham Asylum, awaiting trial for the five murders he committed in the first film. The film shifts gears though. This isn't just another gritty drama. This time, Phillips takes things in a bold new direction, blending courtroom drama, musical elements, and psychological horror into one surreal experience. And of course, we get the introduction of Lady Gaga's Lee Quinzel, who eventually becomes Harley Quinn. Gaga's portrayal of Lee Quinzel is hypnotic. She's not exactly like the Harley Quinn we know from other DC movies or comics. In Foley Adu, she's introduced as a pyromaniac with a dark obsession with Arthur Fleck. Fueled by the notoriety he gained after the events of the first film. She's fascinated by the legend of the Joker, and this admiration quickly turns into a toxic, all consuming relationship. Throughout the film, Lee manipulates Arthur into abandoning his medications, encouraging him to once again embrace the chaos within him. And this brings us to the climactic courtroom scene. After Arthur decides to defend himself in court, against Harvey Dent, of all people, he confesses that there's no alter ego or joker persona to blame for his actions. He reveals that it was him all along. He admits to the murders from the first film, and even confesses to a sixth killing, that of his own mother. This bombshell is a major turning point. Now, why is this important? Up until this point, we've been led to believe that Arthur has fully become the Joker. That there's a line that separates his normal self from his Joker identity. But in this moment, Arthur is saying, No, it was always me. This admission shatters the illusion that he's simply a man who transformed into Gotham's villain. He's just a deeply disturbed individual. This confession not only shocks the courtroom, but disgusts Lee Quinzel. In that moment, she's no longer fascinated by him. Her vision of the Joker crumbles, and she walks out on him. But just when you think the trial will conclude and Arthur will face his fate, the courtroom is hit by a massive explosion. This moment takes the film from a psychological drama to full-on anarchy. The blast injures several people, including Harvey Dent, whose face is horribly scarred, hinting at his future transformation into Two-Face. And in the chaos, Arthur escapes. He's helped by a couple of his fanatic supporters who seem to worship him as the Joker. They throw him in a car and start fantasizing about creating even more mayhem. But here's the interesting part. Even though they see Arthur as a symbol of anarchy, Arthur himself isn't on board. He's frightened, overwhelmed, and in a moment of panic, he jumps out of the car and flees. This is where the film shifts from action to something much deeper and tragic. Arthur returns to that iconic staircase from the first film. You know the one where he danced his way down to full madness. He meets Lee there, thinking that now that he's escaped, 
they can finally be together. He even tells her that they can start a new life, raise their child, and live in freedom. But Lee knew fully disillusioned with him. He kills him. She doesn't see him as the Joker anymore, but just as a broken man who failed to live up to the myth she had built in her mind. In that moment, Arthur's entire delusion unravels. The love he thought he had with Lee is gone. The Joker persona he thought he embraced is a hollow shell. He's not the grand villain he believed he had become. He's just Arthur Fleck. And then comes the most shocking twist of all, the final scene. Arthur, now back in Arkham Asylum, was called to meet a visitor. As he walks down the hallway, a fellow inmate, someone we've seen in the background throughout the film, stops him. This inmate, whose face is often obscured, tells Arthur he has a joke to tell. But instead of a punchline, the inmate stabs Arthur repeatedly, delivering blow after blow as Arthur collapses. And just as we're left in shock, wondering what's happening, the inmate gives a disturbing laugh a laugh eerily similar to the one we associate with the Joker. He then slices his own face into a grotesque grin, much like the classic Joker smile. In this final moment, it becomes clear Arthur Fleck was never the Joker. The true Joker is this inmate, inspired by Arthur's chaotic acts. Arthur was just a tragic, forgotten man whose brief reign of terror inspired someone far more dangerous. Arthur Fleck's story wasn't the birth of the Joker, but rather the birth of the idea of Joker. So what does this all mean? It means that the Joker isn't just one man. He's a symbol. In this universe, the Joker is not a single identity, but a chaotic spirit that can infect anyone. Arthur Fleck thought he was that man, but in the end, he was just a catalyst for the real villain to emerge. This twist adds a whole new layer of complexity to the character and leaves us with more questions than answers. And what about Harley Quinn? Well, as the film closes, it seems clear that Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix are done with their Joker saga. Phillips has even said he's not planning a third movie. But where does that leave Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn? Could she carry on the legacy of this gritty Gotham? Phillips has hinted that this story isn't about continuing her journey. But with the popularity of both Gaga and the Harley Quinn character, you never know.